Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about powers and polynomials with regards to EQAO practice. Now this section is actually pretty quick. I know some of the other EQAO videos were pretty long. This one I don't think will be because there's really just seven multiple choice questions that I seek to answer today and then we can be done. Okay, so this first one says, a rectangle is divided into five equal sections as pictured. Which of the following represents the area of one section? Okay, so what we must do to find this out is we're going to find the area of all five sections first, and then we're going to divide that answer by five to find the area of one section. So what's the area of the full thing? The area of the full thing is 25x times 3x, which is 75x squared. Now to find the area of just one section, that's going to be 75x squared divided by 5, which is going to be 15x squared, right? If we do 75 divided by 5, we get 15, right? And the x squared just stays as is. So therefore, our answer is D, right? That the area of just one section here is going to be 15x squared. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on. Number two. The uh, rectangle is shown below with algebraic expressions for its length and its width in centimeters. Which expression represents the area in centimeters squared? Well, that means we need to take the base times the height, right, is how we get there. So this is going to be 3x times x plus 5. Now remember the rainbow rule that we did, and I think it was one of the earliest units. It was either unit 1 or unit 2, where we talked about the rainbow rule or distributive property, how we must multiply the 3x not only by x, but also by the 5, right? So here we're going to get 3x squared as our first term. And for our second term, it wouldn't just be plus 5. It would be 3x times 5, which is 15 x. Okay. And that would be D. The answer a lot of people would choose would be C, but I confirm that C is not the right answer because remember we must, um, you know, we must actually multiply through for both. Okay. So do keep that in mind. Very important. Awesome. Okay. Uh, okay. So the next one says, what goes in the blank to complete the equation below? Okay, well, let's think about that. Um, 8 times what is 24 is the first question we got to ask ourselves. And th 8 times 3 is 24, so it has to be something that starts with 3. And then x to what power will get us to x to the power of 12? Well, keep in mind, when we multiply two powers together, we add the exponents with the same base, right? So 3 plus some number is going to get us to 12. Well, 3 plus 9 will get us to 12. So the power must be the power of 9, right? And so therefore, the answer is A. So treat this kind of like two separate questions where we first look at the coefficients of, okay, 8 times what is 24? And then ask ourselves, okay, x cubed times x to the power of what gives us x to the power of 12, given that we know that we must add up the two powers, the 3 and some other number, to get to 12, and that number must be 9. Very good. Okay, what is the value of 5x cubed y squared when x is 2 and y is 4? Well, let's find that out. 5 times 2 cubed times y, which is 4 squared, is equal to 5 times 2 cubed. Well, what's 2 cubed? That's going to be 8 times 4 squared. That's going to be 16. Then let's plug that into our calculator. What's 5 times 8 times 16? That is going to be 640. So therefore, our answer is D, which is 640. Very good. Okay, which exponent goes in the box to make the equation true? Okay, well, let's keep in mind that when we uh, add, or, or when we multiply two exponents together, we add the exponents, right? We add the exponents and we add the powers. And then when we divide, we subtract the power, right? 
And so it's going to be some number, let's call it uh, a, for example, it's going to be a times six, or sorry, a plus six, because we're adding the powers. Right, a plus six, and then what do we do when we have the minus the, the x squared on the bottom, we would subtract two from the power. So a plus six minus two would have to be 12, right? So that means a plus four would have to be 12, and that means a would have to be eight, right? So therefore eight is going to be our, um, our answer there. Very good. Okay. All right, let's do number six. Which of the following is a simplified form of this expression? Okay, well, let's find out what the simplified version is and see if it matches up with any of these. So here we have five, four times five X, which is 20 X, and then four times negative eight, which is negative 32. And then here we have negative three times two, which is negative six X. And then we have negative three times negative seven, which is plus 21. Okay, so then we have, let's see, 20 X minus six X is 14 X. And then we have 30 minus 32 plus 21, which is negative 11. So therefore, A is going to be our answer there. Very good. Okay, last one, number seven. Marcus is building a rectangular dog pen along the side of his house as shown below. Marcus has 20 meters of fencing for the three sides of the dog pen. What is the length of the dog pen with the maximum area? Okay. So for this one, we know that there's 20 meters of fencing. And when it comes to optimization, optimizing this, right, we know that the length, so normally the length and the width would have to be the same, right? However, this is a special case because it's up against a house, right? And so this house does not also need that fencing. And so the length is going to be double what our width is going to be. So therefore our length would be 10 and our width would be five on either side. So our answer is 10. Now let's, you know, let's prove it to you. How come the length would have to be 10 and length couldn't be any of these other things? Well, let's say the length was five. Well, then the other two would have to be 7.5 and five times 7.5 is certainly not 50, right? Uh, five times 7.5 is not 50, it's 37 and a half. So that wouldn't work. What if the length was four? Then that would mean we'd have eight on each side and we'd get four times eight, which is only 32, so that wouldn't work. Let's say it was 12, right? Let's say length was 12. That would mean we'd have eight left over for either side, uh, for the sides together. So that means four for each side. So 12 times four is equal to only 48. And so to kind of show you that this is the optimal answer given the answers we have, is going to work as well. So even if you didn't know that rule, let's say you went to EQAO not knowing that rule, you could also, another way to do it would be to kind of try all of them and see which one gives you the maximum area because they're not going to give you a question on EQAO that doesn't have a valid answer. One of these answers is correct. So whichever one of these answers produces you the maximum area out of the answers must be the overall maximum as well, just because they've got to give you, you know, the correct answer as part of this. All right, well, that's this one. I know this one was kind of a quick one, but I did still want to go through the powers and polynomials as it is an important part of the course, and it does come up on the EQAO somewhat as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Good work, everyone, and I will see you for the next EQAO practice. Bye, everyone.